Hello, beautiful stars. Happy Friday night. Uh, you are here with Esoteric Tea with Lucky and Courtney. I am Courtney, host of uh, Stars of the Morning Light, and Lucky's channel is Lucky Stone 888, which we will be live July 19th at 8 p.m. over at Lucky's Lucky Stone 888. How you do doing, Lucky? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Um, just running stopping running stopping trying to get things uh um i don't know if i told you that the, the I, oh, maybe not, probably not the car i bought the driver's side floor was wet damp so i figured out there were three causes of it which is basically a leak from the moon roof uh, uh, a, a leak from the air conditioner or a leak from inside the door so rather than try to troubleshoot and figure which one it is i did the remedy for all three of them Oh, so I, you know, busy. I, I yeah, I it actually wasn't that hard because the air conditioner, it's a little like a little round hole, you know, at the back of the engine, which is, yeah. which, which is a little bit deep to dip, but like my arms are long enough and just put something in there. And I don't know if anything came out, but I do know when I ran the air conditioner, liquid came fl flying out. And then same thing, the moon roof. I, I cleaned up all that, made the nice, all the, you know, all the, yeah. you know, the thing where the water will go down. And I ran hot water down it, and it went right through, no problem. And in the door, I looked to the hole. And do -do. So I don't know what caused it, but I did all the remedies. So I don't, you know, rather than try to figure out which was, I just did the remedy for all three. And then the floor, I put baking soda down because baking soda is a really good absorbent. <laughs> and then I got one of those plastic things that, you know, you put in the, in the closets, and, the, and it kind of melts, and the water goes in there. And now the floor is bone dry. My, my wife's reaction is, I can't wait for the next big rainstorm so we can find out, because she thinks it's the moon roof that was leaking. We can see it, you know, we, you know if, if your remedies work. And I, I don't have a heart to tell it. I'm positive it works because if it, with the you way the rain it. is, yeah, I yeah. mean, it's basically, I, yeah, exactly. I put water through each of the channels and they didn't, because the floor was dry for the most part. Yeah. And it didn't get any more wet. So, but now, it, as of today, it's bone dry. So, yeah, and you know the car, the air conditioner only worked on one in four, which means there's a little little thing that goes inside the the blower that that it's a sensor. Yeah, I, I changed that out, which was easy. So this car, to me, everything's working perfectly. The two little tiny things, which I got wet floors, a pain in the ass, but you know I'm pretty proud of myself. I, yeah, I was... you should be. Yeah, and you jumped right into action. You know, that's a lot of people. They see it. They're like, okay, I'll get to that. I'll figure it out when I get, you know. Um, and we're going to be talking about that, I think, a little bit tonight. Um, Lucky, I have a question before we kind of get into the subject of tonight, which is self-sabotaging. Um, how have you been feeling, like, since kind of July, end of June, July, that we're going into? Because July is kind of notorious for time shifts, time jumps, stuff like that like are you feeling kind of in and out of time in various ways i honestly i'm going to be side, i'm going to be outside of that kind of thing because i have decided to walk 10,000 steps a day and i've been doing it for 2 weeks good job and it is putting me in a place where anxiety is gone depression is gone oh, anger is okay. gone because and someone said that physical activity is a way of combating anxiety and depression yes and my stupid phone went from i, I my goal was 300 3500 steps a day but my phone reset itself to 10,000, and i'm like you know what i'm gonna try it out what's the worst that can happen so i've been doing that 10,000 steps a day which is about five miles and it's not straight it's not which is basically an hour and a half or what a plus. Yeah. I've been breaking out to like two or three, just getting it, you know, in the morning, afternoon, and then in the evening, just, you know, yeah, tying yeah, yeah. it up. But getting 10,000 steps between midnight, you know, and midnight sort of thing. And it, it's been making me feel great. So, and I have heard people talking about that, you know, they've been getting, you know, feeling weird, depressed, stressed from different places that unexplained. I don't have that, but also I'm outside of that because I'm doing this extra work, this extra, you know, and also 
daily meditation, clearing my head. That's been also easier for me. I've been able to focus more. Good, So, good, good, good. so this normal thing that other people are experiencing, I'm kind of outside of that. And, you know, Yeah, I I have, will but, say. you know, I, yeah, I heard a lot of people saying that they're, they don't, they feel out of sorts. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel great. So I don't know. And that, cause that's what I hear yeah, over, over and over. People say, yeah, I don't feel right. Well, you know, uh, hiking or walking like that is like, uh, you know, it's a meditation in motion. And I, you know, and it, it sucks right now because in the summer you can't walk anywhere here, you know, it's just too hot. So for me hearing you do that, I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous, <laughs> you know, cause we can't, I mean, I had a friend staying with me <laughs> one, one of the days, cause he kept saying, I want to go for a walk. I want to go for a walk. And I was like, cool, go for a walk, man. He walked out of my front door and he said, okay, I'll see you in about a half an hour. He made it down the, down, like two doors down the hill and around the cul-de-sac and was like, holy crap, I'm dying. Like he was questioning if he could get it back up the small hill to my house. He's like, I see the house. That's how horrible the heat and weather and cause you can't even breathe in it in the Tennessee Valley area Mm -hmm. by, by this time. It's like, you can't even breathe. So You know, I'm kind of, I feel that I'm, I'm feeling a little jealous of all your walking. I, I, I'm, I'll get back to it. Trust me. Once this goes away, but I also too, uh, July, when I say July, I should really say after the summer solstice into leading into like the lion's gate, the eight, eight of August, Mm-hmm. Yes. there tends to be time jumps, time shifts Oh, yeah. or Yes. Like, like absence of time or getting confused with days and time, you know, it's like you might be working on something and set and you check the clock. Okay. It's four o'clock and you feel like three hours have passed and then you check the clock again and it's only 40 minutes or, or vice versa, whatever it may be. We get that a lot after the summer solstice and it's the energy of the summer uh, here in the North hemisphere. So I was just wondering, but if you are grounding like that, the more people ground, the less um, untethered, as my husband would refer to it, the less untethered people can feel, definitely. I have been getting that, especially at work, where I'll be working my ass off thinking, okay, I, I, I've been doing this for like two, three hours, and it's only been an hour, hour and a half. Like, what Right. the hell? And a lot of times, I've just been cruising around, and half the night's gone. Yes. And it's like, it, I have work especially, which is weird for me because I like to have my nights you know, segmented. I'll get this done then, this done here, this done here. I've been having trouble doing that at work, but again, it's work. So I don't, you know, at the end, of, once I leave work, I'm done. I'm not bringing work home anymore. It's, um, it's funny. I have teams for work and I put teams on my phone. I reload it on Monday and delete it on Friday morning when I leave the build and done teams. Done. So, uh, and because they were talking about that, if you have any company software that they can search your phone at any point. Yeah. So, I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to delete, and you can't delete any files that might be involved the company. Right. And you no, know, once I delete Teams, everything the associated with Teams is gone because it, it's already on the company computer, anyways. It's Right. Right. you know, the only reason why I keep Teams is only just in case someone in manufacturing needs to get a hold of me while I'm on shift. But Right. off shift, I don't need it. So, where was it going with this? Oh, just just the BS of work. Um, Yeah. losing time. So Losing like I said, time. it, Everybody it, goes yeah. through it. Yeah. if I can't get my work done at the end of my shift, it's not my problem. You know, I will do the best Right. I can, but once I leave work, which is not normal for me, normally it's, I got to get everything done, you know, but now I have my list and if I don't get it done for this shift, I'll get it done the next day. No problem. Yeah, exactly. And I, so this, this July in particular too, I think, so everybody knows there's a lot of timelines that are shifting. I mean, it's just where we are in, in, in history. It, it's so fascinating sometimes to just sit and acknowledge that we're living through history. You know, every day is going to pass, you know, um,
So this July in particular, and I, I kind of wanted to point it out too of the collective Akashic reading before we dig in. Oh, yeah. Because the one in July is like huge. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, we are leaders of creation. And we need faith and reassurance constantly as humans. Um, there's going to be a lot of learning that can happen in July. Um, but for me, because I re-listened to it the other night, because I was like, whoa, we're in July. Like, I didn't even pay attention. Um, at the end there, they say, you know, make peace with the past. Make peace with the now. Make peace with yourself. And honestly, I think that's kind of the theme for a lot of people this month. Um, because remember how you and I have been talking lately about this kind of full circle of like 30 or 20 years for people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. showing up. I think it's kind of like at an apex this month yeah. for us to make peace with the past, make peace with the now, make peace with ourselves. And so I just, I guess I just wanted to remind people it is there. You can view it. I think it's actually in a live uh, section on, on this channel. It is there, the collective reading. It was a powerful reading. And most of all, for us to acknowledge that we are leaders of creator or creation, like us humans, we're creating all the time if we acknowledge it or not. So that kind of goes into the topic for tonight, self-sabotage. Well, we're creating lucky all the time all the time i don't know how to express it like every breath is the breath of creation that lives within you and so therefore you create with every breath like i don't know how to you know stress it more well then where does self-sabotage come into play like what do you think self-sabotage is self-sabotage is usually it comes from the negative talk the negative I mean, it comes down to, oh, fine. You know that, you know, it always happens this way for me. Or I can't trust anybody. Or I can never catch a break. Right. Well, once you say those kind of things, you're looking for people to blame. And usually you're blaming yourself and finding things to, to prove that you have the bad luck. Right. Um, right. Well, that's, I think that's... Yes, yeah. And that's what was interesting when the the July collective message start with, you know, beloved leaders of creation. And then they go into how humans need faith and reassurance. I, I mean, all of us need that. And it is to probably, and it's to block and end those negative thoughts and voices that tell us we're not worthy enough, not good enough. This it's never going to happen or it is going to happen or whatever it may be. So where do we get like reassurance from if we're in that mode? You have to turn things around, change the frequency and look for the mm. positive, look for the good luck. Um, what is it the other day I found something? Oh, I don't remember what it was. Darn it. Um, I, I found something I had lost. Oh, it was a little stone. I, I, I collect crystals. They're all over the place. And this was a, a rough like... Oh, not Labrador. Oh, it was this blue stone, um, blue and white stone. It is called, I call it a lie detector stone. I don't know what, it doesn't matter. <laughs> a lot of them are, are smooth. A lot of them, they, 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 they smooth them out. Um, yeah. I would not know. The fun fact about Courtney, I don't know anything about crystals and stones. Everybody thinks I do. I don't know Jack about all, any of that stuff. I, I, I honestly, to, to be, Blatantly honest, I consider them more of a of a, a feather to Dumbo. They're a they're a tool. They're a a good placebo oh, to yeah. get people to focus yeah. on. So that's why the lapis luzi, which is the blue and white stone, lapis luzi, luzi, and I have this one, and it's a rough. It basically it looks like a car run over it, <laughs> but it's it's big, and it's just rough, and it's just weird to me, and um. It was one of the things where my wife was complaining that that one of our this is this is probably like thirty no not nothing I'm sorry my son is twenty years old so maybe about twelve years ago that that a friend of hers was saying they're going to curse your family and everything and I'm like okay ties in there 
you know. Go I, ahead. I don't know. And they're yeah. cursing. Go right. ahead. So I said that this stone is lapis lazuli. You can look it up, and it's a good luck stone. It absorbs negativity and blah blah blah. And I said, and here this is a special one. You won't find anyone like this because it's rough, which means rough means it, it, it is it has more surface area to to grab the power and everything. And and uh, my wife had kept it for a long time and then lost it and literally literally found it in the house. It's probably been you know sitting in the house, roaming around the house, but in drawer yeah. to drawer. Who knows where it's been going? Yeah. I just found it and I'm like, oh, I remember the stone. I remember the story behind the stone. That's why I love the stone. The story behind it. Yes. Yeah, definitely. A protection. And I, that's funny how you, um, uh, beloved stars. So, you know, I am not in the chat tonight. I do have another, um, event that I'm doing. So please, uh, share, be kind, happy Friday. Um, and I am a little bit tired. So if I don't seem like my most spirited self, it's cause I'm like on antibiotics and whatnot right now, but happy Friday, everybody. Um, Lucky, that's funny that you had just said, like, Dumbo's feather. My husband literally said Dumbo's feather maybe three weeks ago. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. That was the whole point of that story. What a great story to teach. You know, I I told, I loved Dumbo when I was young because I love elephants. But I totally forgot the whole concept <laughs> of what was going on there. Um I wonder if that's, if people actually need something like that too, for reassurance, which is not, there's nothing wrong with that. Like how you said with the crystals just now, like maybe we don't necessarily need them, but it, it gives us that remembrance, that feel, that placebo effect of, mm -hmm. I can do this then. Like, what do we think that could be like a grand reassurance for humans so they can let go of their self-sabotaging. See, I think it's patterns and habits. Uh -huh. I do. Um, what could be like a grand, I don't know, because everybody says love and light, but I don't know. How, I don't know too many people that experience that on a 24 hour basis. Right. It's, it has to be personal. That's the problem with a lot of these affirmations and these good luck terms is it has to resonate with you for it to work. I mean, yeah. your best friend could have this sigil on a, on, on a pendant. And for them, they can manifest anything they want instantaneously. And they go, oh, this has been working so well for me. I'll give it to you. And there's right. a really good chance that this sigil that works for them, that they can literally prove that they can manifest immediately. They give it to you and nothing will happen. And right. it's not the sigil, it's not the pendant, it's not even your friend's power. It is basically means that it doesn't resonate with you. And it, it's not bad, it just that doesn't work. So you need to find something that resonates with you. And a lot of people, they're so programmed by the world around them and those around them that they can't find that thing. And it, you have to mm -hmm. just start with the little things that, what do you believe in? What makes you feel good? And start building on that. and it might not be right for now, but it might shift later and you have to just find what feels good in people use sigils, crystals, um, affirmations. All sorts there's, of stuff. Yeah. There's so many things and, you know, spoken word, written words are very powerful. Yeah. But again, a written down sigil or I'm sorry, written down affirmation from me or for any, anyone else really doesn't work until you just modify it. You change the grammar a bit. You can use even use incorrect grammar, but if it sounds good to you, because the way your mind thinks, um, you got to use it. You got to use how, you know, Pete, was it, uh, was it Steinbeck? My, my English teacher, I remember back in high school where the, a student was, was complaining because we had grammar in, in uh, reading, whatever the hell it was called. Uh, this, yeah, I know. They always complain. <laughs> but Steinbeck wrote in grammatically incorrect ways. Mm. And her response was, when you become a famous author, you can write any way you want. But yeah, this is the, the way he it's writes. The, it's the author's voice. Right. 
I don't write correctly and it drives my husband crazy. So whenever he, I'm like, honey, will you, you know, just proofread this? Like if it's a short story or part of whatever I'm writing. Um, and I'll, I have to stress to him all the time. It's not going to be correct English. It's not going to be correct grammar. Do I know correct grammar? Yes. But is that my voice as an, as an author, as a writer? No, not at all. And that's the point. It's the, it's, Maybe that's it too. Maybe, maybe people aren't understanding of the, they're creating in every moment. They are leaders of creator, which is usually leading to self-sabotage because of what's going on with them. Maybe they're not understanding the, the power of their authenticity. Mm -hmm. Like I, cause like a writer's voice is their authenticity Maybe they're not understanding that. Maybe they're not understanding the power of who they are. Yeah, it, the inner voice can speak in a strange dialect. It can have strange words. It, but it is the inner you. Um, you know, like toddlers. Toddlers have their own language, their own cadence, the way they do do things. And your inner voice is your child self. So you're adult self knows grammar and the correct pronunciation and pretty, pretty, you know how to say things to be understood to others but that might not be your inner voice your inner voice might express itself in a different way and it's not wrong it's just different and you have to know and appreciate it and a lot of us might not be ready to listen to the inner voice because it's it's listening to a part of themselves that sounds strange to yeah. the adult and I, I don't think either that people experience their power. Oh, and a lot of oftentimes our power is a, in is in our authenticity. And I don't think they experience their power enough. And so leading into self-sabotage, I mean, that's really driven from victimhood, victim mentality. Like you were saying at the yes. beginning, the whole, yes. this is never going to work out for me or that or so-and-so hates me or uh, yes, yes, this is going to yes. go down, blah, blah, blah. It's still like victim mentality, not understanding their own power in creation and their own authenticity as to the only one that's making you a victim is, I mean, the only one's making a, someone a victim is themselves opposed to true victims out there. We're not speaking of that matter. We're speaking on the victim mentality. So, that is, I think, what causes self-sabotage. Oh, absolutely. And I, I keep forgetting about this. Sometimes we use our victimhood as a badge of courage. I think we all do. Even if, as if we are higher-minded, sometimes that, that inner ego likes to be seen as the victim to get the sympathy because sometimes sympathy is easier than getting respect. Mm. Um, especially with the people you hang around with that, you know, they, they're more willing to get the love and compassion from people who see you with sympathy because you're, you're sacrificing. And I keep forgetting about that. Cause that, I mean, that me personally, that's what I f fight with. You know, I, I, I'm better than I've, ever been but again you know sometimes you get talking to people and i stop myself and say wait i'm not the victim you know i don't need their compassion to see me as a victim i need you know just to talk and be respected and respect them and hopefully they'll respect me you know i don't have to prove anything to anybody you know right. but sometimes the you know you just want someone to show you love and compassion and sometimes the only way to do that is for them to feel sorry for you and that kind of stinks well yeah and i when you were talking just then i was thinking about love and compassion definitely compassion and i think we live in a world now that when you hear like victimhood i bet you everybody in the chat just started saying like oh yeah everybody's got excuses mm -hmm. you know we we take the term victimhood and we turn it into, yep, they're just, they got excuses, which is, I understand completely understandable, but clearly there's some need for compassion that 
or awareness or training, teaching, motivation, something that people need, because that is filling some, some need for them, that victimhood. It's like you said, it's filling some kind of attention, some kind of, at least in that moment, they feel like they have somebody by their side, you know, or even if it is an excuse, a excuse often means I don't know how. So, uh, I, you know, we always got to be practicing compassion and, and be there for people. I, we're kind of going all over this topic of self-sabotage in different ways because it affects people in different ways. Yes. Like mine was all codependent thought patterns and behaviors when I was like hardcore into self-sabotage. That's what it was um, until I learned boundaries. And, and it wasn't even I had to learn boundaries. Then I had to learn how to like keep boundaries. Like how do I create them and keep them? And then I had to stand firm in boundaries um, because it was oftentimes that the my lack of boundaries my lack of self-awareness and boundaries like all of it just boundaries period created so much sabotage that I didn't know that I was a participant in because I wasn't aware of my lack of boundaries yeah. and I think a lot of people experience that which is actually codependency um and it's easy then when you're going through stuff like that, this lack of boundaries, lack of self-awareness to then when stuff happens, well, then it's everybody else, you know, every person, place and thing else outside of myself doing this to me. Everything's yeah. off, often doing, you know, happening to me. Um, and it's just a cycle that just keeps going and going and going. So... I think people still to this day, the majority of the humans walking around, the majority in the 3D world, I think boundaries is a big issue and exercising their free will and healthy consciousness is definitely the main issue. What do you think about boundaries, Lucky? Yeah, a lot of times self-sabotage comes from blame, mm -hmm. looking for someone to blame rather than looking for a solution and how, and when I my things, again, finding a path forward. I'm not looking to blame. I'm looking for a path forward. Um, you know, we can, we need to fix the problem, not find what caused it. And because finding what caused it is nice not to repeat it, but let's go from a place of, let's get into a better place. So, you know, sometimes when you're stuck in the self-sabotage, you want to blame, even blame yourself or blame your situation that you were put into or blame others. You know, it's looking to someone to blame so you can feel better that, oh, it wasn't my fault or it wasn't all my fault. It was, I was led to this, but looking for a path to go, okay, this is what happened. How can we prevent this from happening again? Uh, without actually assigning the blame. It, it, it's a balancing. It's tough. Self-sabotage. Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, spiral. denial. Denial. Oh, just, denial, yes. Denial is huge, man. And I, I, I know a lot of people, let's say that. I just know a lot of people, family, friends. I mean, I just know a lot of people that their capability of denial is to a level that I never grew up with. I mean, because maybe because I grew up in a household that it's so in your face <laughs> that you can't deny it. You know, yeah. like it's so dramatic in your face and crazy and chaos that you can't deny it. Opposed to other people where it's like this subtle, just current of denial, denying everything. Right. We just denied little white lies, as my grandma used to say little white lies that I, I, I just, I mean, I, I still in contact with a lot of them today. They're my family, friends, what have you. And I'll, I'll see it. Like it, it, it'll happen right in front of my face. And I'm thinking, 
do they know what they're doing? Do they, are they purposely consciously deciding to deny or are they, or is denial that deep rooted that they, they're not even aware of it? And yeah, because denial can be covered up by something else so that they're, and it's not even covered up completely. It's just like shaded or it's behind right. some false facade that they don't see it because they're so focused on something else. Right. It could be keeping up with the Joneses. It could oh, be God, anything. Yeah. I mean, like that's a lot, you know, to save face. Like I've witnessed so much of, you know, little white, what my grandma used to call little white lies, as in it's okay to lie just a little bit if it's saving others or like if it's mm -hmm. preventing any kind of harm and it's not like a huge lie, just a little white lie, right? Um, she, she, she grew, she raised me to believe that. I'm like, mm -hmm. and since I was a child, I was like, no, that's not right. That's not right. Um, and I think it's having discernment as to what to say and what to not say, but not a little white lie, but even that sort of thing. And it's to like save fates and for in whatever capacity, which is a form of people pleasing as well. So like these are all these human characteristics that have come down the, you know, the pipe <laughs> in our genetics and upbringing forever that it really does lead to. Because I, and I'm bringing this up, Lucky, is because I was listening to my teacher. I finally got to connect with them. And they were talking about in July, there will be those who do a grand amount of self-sabotage. And especially also moving forward. And then a conversation came up at the 4th of July barbecue at my house about self-sabotage. And I was like, geez, this just keeps coming up. Um, then, you know, I had a house guest that is was kind of in full bloom of self-sabotage and so it was like right in my face and I'm like this is such an ongoing theme as of right now so what do we what do we do about it because I'm looking at it as we are creating all the time if we regardless if we are aware of it or not regardless if we accept it or not remember we don't have to agree to accept you can accept it. Um, we have free will. So our free will is being used against us in self-sabotage, which is like logically crazy to think, right? And there's now the emphasis of 3D is going to be it's going to be trying to be pulling on people even more so. And 3D, like the death realm, the disappointing realm, whatever you want to call 3D, is pulling on people even more so. Well, that leads to more self-sabotage. So it's like, what do we do about this? I mean, how, what do we do, Lucky? What do we do? What's the answer there, buddy? <laughs> yeah, I get a little bit of notes because... People pleasing is a tough one, but I think with people pleasing and the white lies, the little white lies and people pleasing, I think they're a trap because if you need to tell someone a white lie to preserve their um, self-respect or preserve their feelings, feelings, yes, mm. that's what I'm looking for. Are you just kicking the can down the road? Because if you lie to them, eventually it's going to come up and mm. is it going to be bigger and they can't handle it. But there's another thing was, it was a lie of an, um, no, no. Yeah. A lie of omission is still a lie. Well, maybe there's a way of balancing it that if you need to be a pe cause I'm going to say, if you need to be a people person, because sometimes you just need to be a people person. You just it's just something. So you need to balance yourself the lies and their feelings. So it might just be simply listening to them talk, let them express themselves and not having to lie to make them feel better, but let's let them vent and go off and on, which is a lot of us miss that because we figure we need to fill in the blanks. We need to, you know, let them know they're heard, you know, by 
telling a lie because making them feel better about themselves or better about the situation. So who self-sabotage in people pleasing that that's a tough one, but it, yeah, it, it is. Once it goes, it, it goes back to then you're not, people would never be able to experience their worth and their power. If, if I think if we continue living like that and and what what I hear you saying, Lucky, is that there can be a balance. There can be discernment there as to how you go about doing things. You don't necessarily have to do a white lie. It's how you say it. It's how you give the information. It's do you bluntly burst it out of your mouth and just scream it? Or do you, in compassion and, and understanding, deliver a message, right? It's it's kind of the energy that we we use but i do think that if people don't become aware of their own worthiness and power through their authenticity which will never be attached to people pleasing then there's always going to be the potential of con you know um complications from self-sabotage i really think there is and so here's another posing question because we're not going to probably get to a solution right now no. this is actually posing thoughts within people i mean ask yourself if i'm creating every day every moment if i should be in the now which everyone should you know if i'm creating if I'm demonstrating, which is also the term for manifesting, they mean the same thing, demonstrating and manifesting. If I'm doing these things, even if I don't believe it, maybe, but she's telling me so, so I'll take it with a grain of salt. But I'm, you know, if we're doing that, then I I would I constantly ask myself, in what in what direction, in what energy, in what purpose, what what's the what's my motivation mm -hmm. you know and i think we talked about that last week like check your motivation because usually that's also checking the ego yes right? and oftentimes with victim victim mentality our motivation is revenge blame manipulation you know whatever it is like how you've been talking that i think it starts with self and but we're going to see it more coming and so that's why having this conversation is good so for those who have sight the gift of sight this is the conversation that came up on the fourth of july at my barbecue um take psychics even tarot readers let's say they have a vision and the vision's not the best vision in the world, right? And we'll keep it on themselves. Like they envision, um, I don't know, um, your car, something goes wrong with the car or right, right. that relationship ends or something like that, right? Something that's not the best vision. What do we then end up as psychics or delivering that message do we then put that creation in motion? Leading to self-sabotage. Yeah, unfortunately, once you, I don't want to put it that way, but once you focus on the negative outcome that you feel is going to come, you're putting pieces together to get you to that track. Um, right. But if you say, I have a feeling that my car, that you see car, I have a feeling that my car is going to break down, but there's no indicator your car is going to break down. Right. You're going to have to think to yourself, what exactly is this feeling concerning? And can I troubleshoot it now? Okay, there's nothing wrong with the car, but let's just say I know someone, take it to the mechanic might be a mistake, but there are mechanically inclined people that you can, hey, my car's running fine, but I got this weird feeling. I don't know how to put it. It's an old car. I have a feeling that this kind of thing could happen. Could you look at it? And could maybe you, you can it. 
you know, maybe you do have a psychic premonition that the car is going to break down in some certain way, whether it's going to be a fuel pump or, a, you know, something mechanical. Well, and often, oftentimes, like you like take relationships, a psychic might see like, oh, yeah, this this partner of yours is not healthy. This partner of yours is this is not the one for you. But you've been with this person now for three years and you go to a psychic and they say oh stuff. yeah well then are you then going to be paying attention after that to all the little things that are not the best about the your partner you know are you going so then therefore is that psychic quote unquote creating the scene that they saw in their head for themselves and others so this came up and so wow. the car thing, yes, you can try to bypass and that's what we're supposed to do. We're trying to buy, I know psychics all over the place. It's happened all over the place. Trust me, especially the ones that are untrustworthy of others, which most of them are mm -hmm. because they grew up with gifts that they didn't understand. Yes. Right. And so when there's lack of trust there, um, they'll have a vision about a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe, you know, I knew I've known plenty of them that's like the boyfriend's doing this or these people are against me or that job is going to fire me, whatever it may be. Right. And because they saw it. Well, then everything that they do then is working towards that goal, working towards what is happening instead of understanding that well just because you saw it doesn't mean that it's imprinted mm -hmm. it's not a it's not a legitimate thing it's not written in stone mm -hmm. you know as you were just saying with the car then you know see if you can prevent things instead of doing that they get so in their head of like this is legitimate this is gonna happen i'm gonna get fired or whatever mm -hmm. and therefore creating the motion of self-sabotage I, you know, because most people don't have the gift of sight, so therefore, they're just doing it without even knowing. They're just creating and living through the cause and effect of what they're creating. But then a psychic comes along, and they actually do the same damn thing, but they think that it's because they're wise and they saw it coming. That's not accurate. <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell these people. That's not true. Yeah, I I've seen that too many times myself. Where relationships, where people like, oh, you know, something wrong with my relationship. I know that you know they're thinking about cheating on me, or, or they're just not happy with the relationship. But they don't go about to say, talk to their significant other and say, okay, I don't. We we need to you know improve things. You know, I, I've seen it so many times where. Um, where one person thinks the other person is just not being fair to them, but the other person is, is, you know, treating them sarcastically and there's no communication, you know, mm. it, 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 it's there, they're, they're, although there's no real negative intention, but keep repeating this sarcasm and these, you know, you know put downs over and over again, it's beginning to hurt because they're trying to defend themselves from each other rather than talking to each other. I, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that, in, and, and I and I could I could. Whew. And it's hard for psychics because, you know, it takes them so many years to just even gain enough self um, uh, encouragement, self you know, feel the self worth that they can do yep. what they do. But that doesn't mean that that part changes. It's like they're missing the point of the human free will of creation. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like they're missing that and missing that nothing is written in stone. And it's because you take so many years to establish within yourself and believe in yourself enough to present yourself as a psychic. But I don't understand why they miss that aspect. I, I really, that's, that's the hardest for me. Cause I've even done readings for psychics, others, other readers, you know, 
and they'll say some stuff and I'll be like, that doesn't have to, that doesn't have to happen. Where'd you see that? Where'd you read that? Mm -hmm. What card gave you that? Cause it doesn't have to happen. Nothing has to. Right. right? And I, I just, I think they have it worse. And I think it also kind of is, is warped self-confidence where they don't have enough self-confidence themselves, but if they see this bad thing happening and it actually does happen, then they know their psychic ability works. Oh, bingo, man. Yeah. But their problem is they don't have the self-confidence where, where it belongs. They're putting the self-confidence in a place of proving it in the most negative way possible. Yeah, exactly. Like I it knew this, I told you this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this three weeks ago, this was going to happen. Then why didn't you do something about it three weeks ago? Oh yeah, it's so tough. <laughs> you know, it's why warped, didn't you yeah, change the energy here. three weeks ago? <laughs> mm. Oh boy. That's I think they have it worse because of that. And you know, and so I, I, this is all in like, it is, I'm, I'm kind of being tongue in cheek, but it, it is that I really do care about that community and I, I'm seeing it even more so. And this was the, one of the conversations that came up on the fourth, along with other terms of self, uh, sabotage going around that it is an issue in the community that as they are individuals they will see things and then make, create it mm -hmm. and opposing to seeing something going, eh, I don't really like that. I think I'm going to change it up. I'm going to write a whole new page, a whole new, you know, uh, paragraph on that one. That ain't cool. I'm going to do something about that. So once again, it's people uh, thinking that things happen to them opposed to we are creating all the time. Mm -hmm. it, it, it does remind me of if you're a psychic and you're getting the traffic report before you leave the house and you see the traffic report says there's going to be an accident on your normal path and you go, oh, this is going to be an accident on my normal path rather than saying, why don't I take a different way to work? <laughs> you know? Right. Right. But, but you know, they, they go, I, they, I knew there'd be traffic. They said it was going to traffic. And yep, there was traffic rather than going, I mean, I could go a different way. It's going to be a longer path around it, but I'll get to work earlier because I'll be avoiding the traffic. But again, you say, okay, I see this capping in the future and you go, how can I, avoid it at this moment what can i change in my path to you know be better you know how can right. i fix this yeah but right. rather than going oh this is my no way to work i have no choice this is this is how i go to work this right. is it i'm gonna be and late i do think it comes into play of people still not thinking that they have authority over what happens it, it's this it's oh, yeah. and for me as you as you're a patron I mean, at almost every video in our in Stars of Morning Light Patreon, I'm like, you have ultimate authority. You have ultimate authority. I keep trying to drum it into people um, because we do. So for me, I guess I might take it for granted to knowing that I have authority over what happens to at least to me around me affect that affects me. I do have authority as to how that goes because it's my life. And my, my space, my energy, my Taurus field, all of it, it's all mine. Um, and I don't know how to, I don't know where in society, other than dogma, doctor nations, programming from way far back, people have put themselves so below everything else, you know, and I, I plan on doing a series about order. I've been wanting to do a thing about order, but now I really am needing to do it because people don't understand, like there's, a, there's chaos and there's order. Uh -huh. And this is why we also want to worship things. Like as humans, we, we have that innate 
carnal thing within us not carnal that's animalistic but even animals really uh -huh. but that innate thing in us to have to worship all that is is because from the beginning the beginning of the forgetfulness we have desired the order out of the chaos and because we don't know how to establish order we just keep putting ourselves lower and lower to these things that say, oh, we'll establish the order for you instead of standing in our own power and knowing our own order. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I just got on my soapbox. I'm sorry. It just, it is frustrating to me. It's just frustrating. I have love and compassion towards everyone, but it, it, it's kind of getting to a time and place in our everyday history um that the awareness the the self-awareness attached to our consciousness needs to be more illuminated in the concept of you have ultimate power and authority and i don't i don't know i don't know if people they give their power away um they are always in a search for it because they're trying to search for order in the chaos which is really the power yeah. they're they're constantly not understanding that it's within and in their authenticity in their authority in their free will so i don't know lucky i guess i that was my soapbox as to I, I i think i need to take probably a courtney a little courtney break the next few days and just like you know do a little bit of grounding myself because sometimes it's like man everybody just keeps choosing to live in 3d they just keep choosing to live in 3d with all the victimhood the sat the self-sabotaging the horrible thought processes and the dogmas and the programming everybody talk shit about the programming you're choosing it now it's a choice if you're aware it's a choice right yeah and a lot of people that go with that the psychic and the tarot readings it it proves there's no free will and it's like no no you've missed a point that the psychic and the terror are, are, are like a map. It says this as your current path indicates this is where you'll be. Now I've warned you, now you can avoid it. But of course, by avoiding it and I'm telling you the psychic reading and the tarot reading, now you've avoided the, the, the negative or the or the thing. Now you've proven that the psychic is is you know doesn't work, you know. Like no. No, you've missed a point entirely. But I, I've had those conversations where it, it gets around in a circle where by the psychic being wrong, it proves that, you know, the psychic doesn't got wrong. Well, if, they, if what the psychic said doesn't happen, the psychic got it wrong. But if what the psychic says comes true, there's no free will. This is the kind of arguments yeah. that I've had with people. And yes. it's like, yeah, there's no there's no right answer with this. This is a trap either way. Yeah. That's why with my with all of my readings, I say based on the current energy. Yes. Based yes. on the current energy, this is what is predicted to happen. You can change that energy at any time. You, I could get off the phone with somebody, go for a walk, and change it. Uh -huh. You can change, and th so that's why a lot of people argue the human free will thing because you know, especially uh -huh. Carl Jung. God bless Carl Jung. I love him dearly. Love him. But he's the one who brought up the concept because of the programming, because of the dogmas, because of centuries of looking for the order inside of the chaos. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have actual free will because what we're choosing from is only so many various options. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that I don't particularly think that's true, but I do for those who. um are unwilling to kind of have that acceptance of this is what it is right now. And then what? Uh -huh. Like, I think when we continue to fight, we continue to be a victim. We continue to be in anger. We continue to not heal. We continue this and that. Well then, yeah, you're limiting your options and your, your expansion into higher consciousness. You're limiting yourself, which is also a form of self. -sabotage. Oh yeah. Uh, absolutely. You know? 
because no one's limiting anyone it's it's uh, other than themselves yeah i mean what is so someone say what makes you happy and i i went out with him because i'm difficult said nothing makes me happy except for me i the, the thing that makes me happy or things that upsets me or makes me angry no this is my choice by grabbing what someone else did and either making it make me angry or make me happy it's all in my free choice and you know they're they're looking for things that, you know that externally that that will bring you joy or, or upset or, or anger yeah. and it's like those don't exist until i make them affect me in, in whatever way possible which i'm looking for you know manly p hall cool. um manly p hall teaches that happiness is actually a bro a byproduct of what we do mm -hmm. and i do believe that and it's interesting that you brought that up because i also had another conversation this past week about happiness and and love and whatnot and i was telling this individual like you keep looking for happiness and love and all of these outside influences, a mm -hmm. job, a partner, a money, a, you know, a house, you know, all these things outside of yourself. And it will only come from within. And then I turned to him and I said, my husband and I, for a few years of our marriage, we thought happiness and love came from each other. And it was horrible and miserable. And we actually hated each other uh -huh. until we learned that the love that you crave is within. Uh -huh. That's when we could then choose to share it with each other and really love each other. Yep. And all, I think that's everybody. They, we look at outside influences to be happy. And of course, everybody wants to be happy and they have, they deserve it. Their birthright is joy, happiness, peace, harmony. That's everyone's birthright. But their path is materialistic. Their path is very 3D. Their path is people pleasing, doing what people tell me to do to get to this happiness, whatever it may be. But it's not standing in the love that is within and the compassion for self and others and the power of that. There's no ex there's no expansion. And without any expansion, well, then you're going to get what you get. I, it's it's. It's kind of sad to see and witness. And um, I guess I'm just, I, I guess for me personally, it's not that I can't remember who I was before. It's not that I can't remember the Courtney 20 years ago, before I started healing, before I started this big journey I was on. It's not that I don't remember that girl. It's that because I'm on the other side of that, I can't, I can't understand the lack of willingness to have the courage to do it. Mm. Yeah. And that's goes to self-confidence that, that, you know, that yeah. you believe that you can do it. You can be happy that you can bring. I think, it, I think people <sighs> don't believe like when I was going through it at the beginning, yeah. of my journey i didn't believe i was worthy oh. of anything love happiness gratitude oh that's a big a one fucking, a, you know fucking roof over my head i didn't believe i was worthy of anything mm -hmm. and i think most people have the spirit of that unworthiness attached to them and i gotta tell you it's because the church keeps telling them to have it absolutely yeah yeah Man, everybody listening, we are not against what's going on with you. We're actually in full support of whatever's happening and those around you and the love that is available and the worthy that you are. I mean, if if people are alive right now, lucky if they are alive on this planet right now, they are completely deserving and worthy. You're you're here. Your birthright is all of those great, joyous things. Um, but I I can say a bunch of stuff. You can say a bunch of stuff, Lucky. We yep. can't give that person or people the idea that they're worthy or the idea of, you know, they can do it. The confidence you were talking about. We can't give it to someone. We can just 
be human demonstrations, manifestations that there is something on the other side. Very true. Very yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So any final thoughts, Lucky? We went so, I know, dude. Well, there was so I know. many, we meandered, but again, it, it comes down to, you've got to believe in yourself. And the biggest step is to take the little teeny ones, just believe mm -hmm. in the little things. Uh, you know, if you find a penny on the ground, pick it up because that is your gift of abundance. And once you appreciate that you can manifest a penny, then you can manifest a, a dime, a dollar, or a hundred dollar bill maybe. Right. But you've got to start small steps. And if you know, if you're just going to believe in the little things first, and then the big things will come. Because yeah. yeah, self-sabotage is, is just not believing in yourself and it looking is. for excuses why not to believe in yourself. Yeah, I I now refer to it as showing up for myself. Mm -hmm. Like I had, I definitely couldn't show up for other people, and I definitely was not showing up for myself because of the whole unworthy feelings. But slowly and surely, I just kind of slowly started showing up for myself. Like, oh, Courtney, you should maybe brush your hair today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's how bad it was. Like, mm -hmm. maybe you should do that. Maybe you should take a shower, show up for yourself. Like, and then, of course, it grows and grows. Like, oh, maybe you should leave the house today, Courtney. Show up for yourself. You, you know, so I call it showing up for yourself. And here's the thing, too, is that I think a lot of people, we wait for others to do it for us. Or we wait for others to show us that they care enough mm -hmm. that to inspire us to show up for ourselves. That's not going to ever happen. Mm -hmm. No one can fulfill that role. No one can. I mean, a parent tries, a spouse tries, best friends try. But if we're not showing up for our own selves no one else is going to be able to do it for us. And everybody takes that in a negative way, but it's not a negative thing because within is where it's at. So we have to kind of prove it to ourselves that we're going to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Well, True. everybody have a good weekend. Lots of, yeah. Lucky we were all over the place. Tons of food for thought tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I want to really stress again, please go listen to the July collective Akashic reading. It is in the playlist under monthly readings and, or I think I recorded it live and then just posted it. So it'd be under the live, um, have faith and reassurance that you are the ultimate, you are the leader of creation. You're creating all the time. So, you deserve beautiful, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I say, Lucky. Absolutely. Um, anything else, buddy? Uh, Last words. That's just be good to yourself. Uh, and, you know, do little things just to make yourself, you know, only you can make you happy. So do little things to make yourself happy. Little things. It's yeah. okay. The product of what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, good night, everybody. Happy Friday. Go on over to Andromeda 7 if you're still here. Thank you. Um, and of course, if you're not on Lucky Stone 888, please go to the description below. Follow Lucky because next week, July 19th, we are going to be live um, at Lucky Stone 888 um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. If you're new, please think about subscribing because I got to get to at least 500 so we can go live all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Lucky, I'll see you next week, man. Have a all good right. one, everybody. Have a great week. Have Thanks a good for weekend. coming.